The game is on, Mrs. Hudson. <laughs> My name is Dominique, I'm a writer, I'm a social entrepreneur and I'm a mental health advocate. That means that um, as a main job I try to change how we talk about mental health. What would you like to have as a background? I would say we go together to the Steinseehütte im, in the Lechtalgebirge. <laughs> Back in 2019, you gave a talk at TEDx TUM. What was that talk about? Well, it was about mental health um, and how we would all profit if we would speak more openly about it and more, more common like we do about physical illnesses and physical health. How full is your battery right now? This is a question I wish we'd start more conversations with. And it was also about the Berg und Mental, which is um, Europe's first mental health cafe and which we opened a couple of days after the TEDx talk right here in Munich. Dann ist der große Moment gekommen und das erste Mental Health Café Deutschlands öffnet seine Türen. Bei Getränken und Snacks können die Besucher hier ganz ungezwungen miteinander ins Gespräch kommen. How full is your battery right now? To be honest, around 35%. Uh, it's the end of the day and it has been a couple of busy weeks with Corona and everything. So it starts to drain the battery in the background, but I see that I recharge it, recharge it every now and again. You wrote an article about mental health for founders. What are the challenges in founding a startup and still keeping good care of your battery? Well, what I found that If you have a startup, there seems to be this omnipresent story. Okay, if you have a startup for at least five years, you have no private life and you, your life will only be work, work, work and no holidays and everything. And many young founders really seem, okay, if this is the way, then I have to take it like that. But they just work over their own battery and work over their own resources. So at the end, their body says, okay, this has been too much. And so some of the good ideas never really have a chance to really evolve. And so what I'm trying to do for myself, but also to keep or pass on to other founders is that you can have a startup and work a lot and love your work, but still you need some time to recharge and away from the work. And at the end, this is the best you can do for your enterprise. If you are healthy and fit and motivated, um, then your enterprise, your startup um, will profit from that. So how did the first months go um, once you opened the cafe? It was amazing. Um, people really kept coming in and um, we had this business plan and our numbers were better than we um, anticipated. So that was, that was really great. But um, especially the reactions, the feedback that we got from the customers um, at the Berger Mental, but also from all over Germany when people heard about um, us, um, that was really, we, we couldn't really believe how good everything went and how ready people were for a place like ours. How did Corona impact your own business and how did it impact your personal life? Well, it impacted us a lot. Um, with only being open three months, we had no chance to have any um, money to, um, in the background um, to keep us through a time like this. Um, so we had to completely close. At the beginning, we did lots of online workshops and people supported us with virtual coffees and cake. Um, and because they couldn't visit us, they did it like um, online. But um, the longer the shutdown hold on, the, the less this got. And um, well, for me privately, I really, I really saw how much I've learned over the last couple of years. Um, um, the whole shutdown didn't really affect me as, um, as Dominique, but as the entrepreneur Dominique, it got, with every week, it got harder and harder, and it really started to drain the battery quite, um, quite heavily. <laughs> You're putting some material online to teach people the basics about mental health. What are these and how does it work? Well, our goal is to change that and how we as a society talk about mental health. But many people 
don't have any idea what mental health actually is or how you can see how is my mental health. So we are putting like um, a basic course for mental health out there, which really shows all the different aspects that do have an effect on your mental health, being it like body with sleep or nutrition or breathing, or being it like uh, the circumstances where you live or who you surround yourself with. And there are so many different factors. And we try to show people, well, here are some key things um, that in the end uh, indicate how your mental health is. In the talk you also speak very briefly about mental health first aid. Can you elaborate on that? Well, um, in the end, we all do normal physical health first aid when we do our driving license, but the chances that we have one time in our life the, um, the chance, the opportunity to be there with mental health first aid for somebody, be a colleague or a brother or a friend, are much more higher. But we don't really learn how we how we could do that. It really is time that we learn. Okay, if my colleague um, is sitting in the in the kitchen crying, what can I do? Or um, if somebody's having a panic attack, what can I do? It's very important when you do the classical first aid. It doesn't always have to be about life and death. Um, it can also be if somebody cut the fingers and you put a plaster on it. That's also first aid. And so mental health for AIDS doesn't have to be the suicidal crisis um, somebody standing on a bridge but it can just hugging someone listening to them because they just got some bad news how can I learn more about it or how can I actually learn to be trained in mental health first aid well, if you are lucky and not living in Germany, um, for example, in the UK or in Australia, then there are many, many courses where you can go and learn that stuff. And in Germany, it's only slowly starting to, to spread and um, to be set up. But if you um, Google mental health first aid um, for the UK, for example, then you can learn more what it is about and how this whole process would take place. And what is the most beautiful sound? <laughs> the voice of Benedict Cumberbatch. It's so deep and calming and just, uh, yeah, he's an amazing actor. Want to see some more? Oh, God, yes. The game is on, Mrs. Hudson! How can people actually find more about your work? Well, they can uh, go to mentalhealthcrowd.de. We also have Instagram account or if you are interested in Berg und Mental um, website, uh, www.bergundmental.de or Instagram. Or I have written also a book with my story. It's called in German, Warum normal sein gar nicht so normal ist. And yeah, if, if you go to one of these, you'll find the other things as well that we do. Thanks again for being here and for the nice interview. Thanks for having me.